So Hemo, we were going to use acrylic inks and wet into wet techniques and let that dry and then put wet pastel over the top and use some water with those if we wanted to. The soft unison pastels, that's these ones, will mix with water because all pastels are is the same as watercolour, they're pigment, but they're bound together with gum arabic just like watercolour. So it means that if we use them with water, like watercolour, they will melt. But they are slightly heavier pigments, so they're not as transparent. Now the beauty of pastel is that with the gum arabic, once we put it on with water, it dries, it is fixed. So we don't have to spray a fixative on it, it will fix. So if we put pastel on and then mix it with water, let that dry, it gives us a foundation which is fixed. The reason for using the acrylic inks would have been, unfortunately we haven't got them today, um, but we've got some, some inks just to try here, just to show you wet into wet techniques, is that we can put a thin acrylic background wet into wet and get some lovely effects, as with watercolour that we can't get with pastel, and then we can work pastels over the top when it's dry. Okay. Now we could work pastel with water over the top, but we're probably not going to need to. I will show you how it's done anyway, just for fun. We've got a deep green you've got here, we've got a lovely deep blue, we've got a red, but we haven't got this beautiful purple, so we're going to have to bring that in with the pastels afterwards. So what we're going to do is make a deep, wet into wet, almost abstract effect of the leaves. It looks very complicated, doesn't it? Hundreds of leaves, it looks very difficult. We're not going to try and copy this exactly. All we want is to make brush marks and textures about these leaves approximately the same, okay? So we haven't got to worry about it, we're just going to make things that are an effect of this, an impression of this, an impressionist painting. To get a dark background, we're not going to worry about the lighter colours much, we haven't got any yellow anyway so we can't. We're going to put those in with the pastels afterwards. We're going to make this very deep background and let some of the reds just glow and shine out and then we're going to put the bright colours and the uh, little different, different greens and blues back in on top with pastels afterwards. It's a lovely way to work, and if you've got all the colours in the acrylic inks, then you can make some beautiful effects. And sometimes people have come, students have said, I want to learn to paint very loosely, and I've started them this way. And we get halfway through, because they've been so nervous and so uptight, and I said, stop and just take a look what you've done. And they find that they've done a wonderful thing without even realising, and then they say, this is it, I finished. <laughs> it's, it's such a lovely way to work. Now what we're going to do then is, we don't worry about it spreading out. You know about watercolour wet into wet. If you put wet into wet, it spreads out. And the wetter the paper is, the more it spreads out. Mm -hmm. If you put wet next to wet, it spreads one into another. All we want to do first of all is just have an approximate idea of where things are going to come. I've already marked this on my paper, so I've marked yours the same. We mark it into approximate, don't worry about any marks on the paper because it's all going to disappear. Approximate quarters is always a good idea. But I think we've done this way before, haven't we? Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have approximate quarters like this. And that will refer us to the same on here, because we've got approximate quarters on this. So I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to worry whether it's exact. I'm just going to get the approximate shapes. It's just a lovely loose way to work. Because what we want to do is get beautiful special effects, which we cannot get with the pastel, and then we'll add the pastel on. So for instance, just below this line, just above this line here, comes that flower, and it comes just, let's see, let's see about halfway in from here. So there is that point there. So I just make a shape approximately that size. This one comes here. All I'm going to do is just make a lump of flowers, just so I know where they are, approximately here. That's where they're going to come. These red flowers come this halfway down between that one and that one, halfway down between that one and that one, and they are on a line with that. So I'm going to just make that lump of flowers, simple as that, just abstract shapes, a very rough drawing of these shapes for composition, just so I know where things are going you to You can go. work just with water and pastel. Now, I'll just give you an example of that, for instance. It seems amazing, this, but if I just take this colour, for instance, on here, now, I, put, I usually put the pastel on first and then the water afterwards, and the brush I like to use for that is normally a large oval mop, which is lovely. Um, I dip it into my orange squash. Now, you see, it will just paint. You can bring it out with this. This paper is a £140 hot press paper. Yours, yes, you've got the same. Uh, it's ideal for this. 
That is a harder pastel. Now this is a cheaper pastel. It doesn't blend as well. This is why I'm saying you need top quality plastics for this job. If I now take one of the darker ones for fun, I'll just show you. Let's take a deep blue here for instance. We want a deep blue in the background. Now you'll see how different this is. I'm going to dip it in my orange, I'm bound to in the end. Um, look how that change, look how that paints look. It's much, much better. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we can just use wet into wet techniques. And the other thing is we can draw details out, can't we? You see, look. Mm -hmm. It means that I can make a, if I have a very heavy pastel, if I want to draw little details of twigs and branches and so on, I can put the pastel on and I can use the water with a small brush to do it rather than a, a, a pastel pencil or getting into problems trying to get a very fine line. Mm -hmm. It's very fluid, we can move it around with our fingers like this and blend them together. It's almost like oil paint, it's almost like acrylic. It's a lovely way to work. That's just water and pastel, mm -hmm. but you have to have good soft pastels for it. And when that's dry, it is fixed. So all of these pastels will go on top maybe two coats, three coats more, with no problem. So it's a very good way, if I'm travelling, just to take the soft pastels, my watercolour brushes, no watercolours, and uh, water, and I can just do a whole painting like this on watercolour paper. So that's one technique. Now what we're going to do today though is we're going to put the, the coloured inks on first just for fun, to get the background to work the pastels over. So what, what you need to do first of all, what we need to do, is sketch out like this onto your paper first of all, just to get your composition, okay? Take a look. Oh, I'm going to start with wet into wet. That means I'm going to wet my whole paper. So what I'd like you to do is wet, can you reach that all right? Is wet your whole paper with clean water, all of the paper, completely across. I've got a mucky brush, that doesn't really matter for this job. You see how that's fixed now? Look, it won't move. It's, uh, it's quite fun. So we've got Hemmer's drawing just basically worked out very loosely. Now a nice even coat of water look all the way across. Make sure you don't miss anything. Plenty of water, lots of water on it. That's it. We'll just take some red. Now what red have we got? We've only, we, have, we need to have violet or magenta and red today. We haven't got that. So we're going to have to make do with these few colours just to explore this. So we'll make sure it's totally covered in water. I'll come and give you a hand. Make sure it doesn't matter about a bit, a bit of colour like that. That's it. Really make sure there's lots of lots of water over it. That's it. I think you're just about done, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems good. That seems good, Hilla. Excellent. There we are. Yes. Mustn't leave any dry spots for this because it's it won't work if we do. So make sure it's all wet. That. Right now, the tiniest touch. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going to mix this bit on the board here. I'm take a little bit of this red. Just mix it here. So just take a wee bit of that on your brush. That's it. Now, we're going to go where the reds are here, and just drop it in, look. Look how that spreads out in these lovely effects. Just dab it on, that's it. And we want all of these red flowers. This is very similar it's, it's, to acrylic ink anyway. Yeah, they're very similar, yes. So a little, you see how it spreads out like that? That's why we wanted lots of water. We might need it a little bit stronger in places. But if we, if we build up gently, we build up so it's not too harsh. A lovely colour, isn't that? Mm. And this is going to give us this lovely transparency, translucency, and the effect we're getting are very flower-like anyway, straight away. All these little dots and dashes wherever we see them, and the little bits of flower showing through. We'll have, we can do this with the pastel later, we can bring it back in with the pastel later, it isn't a worry. So however strong they are, wherever they are, and isn't that lovely fun? So that's the way you want to make sure you've got enough water on your, that's why I'm saying of lots of water, you see, because when you haven't got water it's not going to spread and we do want to get that coming right the way through, we can right down to That here. gives us that lovely effect already. Now we want to go a little bit stronger in places so we'll take a little more directly from the jar, just the tip of it look, just directly from the jar, lovely, that's it right into your, that's it got, you've got some on the end? Now where it's brightest, so like here, now I'm going to drop in some really strong bits of that. Well everywhere where it's lovely and strong, get those in because it's starting to dry, so right up through here like this, and if it's spread out, the paper's getting dry, you'll notice. We've got to work fairly quickly now. The paper's getting dry, so we've got to work fairly thickly. Don't want to spill this stuff because it will ruin your tablecloth. And we're going to go to the blue. And we're going to get the blue-greens going of this. Right. So we're going to take some blue now and look at the blue reflections. Can you see all the blues <coughs> in the photograph? Yeah. So this, for instance, is a blue leaf here, reflecting. So I strongly, I'm doing this quite strongly, mm -hmm. and it's going to spread out. So these big, take your brush now, 
and just dip it in there, just the tip of the brush, that's it, all the way, oh, plenty, plenty on it. Wherever you see these blue leaves, the beauty of these brushes is they're already leaf shaped, aren't they? Mm. So we can bring in just where the leaves are, trying to keep them the same size to scale. Don't look at mine, look at the photograph. Hopefully it's still wet enough. You see it's spreading out lovely, that's it. If it's too dry, we're going to go back in with more clean water again, so be careful. Like we did with the reds, mm -hmm. and we get even deeper. So you start going through this with all the deeper, deeper blues now, okay? And you do the same on mine. Drop in these deeper ones. You've got this lovely bright effect. It's almost fun now. It makes uh, quite a nice picture now. That's it. Make sure that they use the side of your brush more, tip of your brush. That's it. You, no, use that way more than this way. That way. Yeah. That way. That's, yes, yeah. You've got more control. You can use thinner mark, but you can do fat mark that way. So thin or fat by pressing one. It's all very. Now, put the blue away. And while it's still wet, we're going to start bringing the deep greens in. This is going to give us these lovely deep shadows. I'll shake that one up. You don't even need to wash the brush, but you go straight in with it. It's all seems a bit mad, but it will all come together when it's dry. Right, so we're getting some green there now, and we're going to drop this deep green into here. Again, use the brush sideways like this, and leave the blue here. Now, you see this area here of the leaves? Well, I'm going to paint in between them. I'm going to leave that blue leaf standing out. I'm going to leave that blue leaf standing out. So it's watercolour technique and we're leaving the light area standing out, the blue area standing out, we're painting in between. Right up and through. That's it, that's good Henry, you're getting the feel of it right down to the edges here. You know, don't, don't leave a, a halo around the edge, that's it. Build it up. We can't put too much on, as long as we don't paint all our lovely bright colours out. Can't have too much because... Um, yeah, but also I'm now learning to do it this way brush. rather than... That's right, both ways, you can use the brush both ways, yeah. All these new things to learn. That's it. Look, you see, we're getting that effect now. Look, mm. with the leaves, isn't it? Isn't it fun? Fantastic. Yeah, it's great fun. So next time we'll be doing um, the painting knife, so we'll have even more fun with a different technique. Yeah, again. because knife I have not really done any time. Okay, well that's what we'll do then. We we'll underpaint with um, the brushes first, and then we bring in the knives afterwards. No, it doesn't matter. We're going to finish it. We we'll, wouldn't. We'll, I'm nearly there because I'm helping you. That's just about done. Look. Fantastic. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. I think we know. That's brilliant. We're, 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 it seems mad now, but that's given us the basis. A loose and wet and wet. We've got lovely effects, Hammer. Now, so we are now going to start using pastel, and we're going to work from some fairly deep, medium deeps through to darks. Mm -hmm. And this time, again, for fun, I'm going to show you how we can use the um, pastels with water. So there's yours. Here's mine. Mm -hmm. And again, we want to be looking at the shapes. Not exactly, but looking at them. So straight away, look, I can, if I want to, I can make a leaf shape, say these leaves, leaves that are coming here, here and here. Mm -hmm. I, can make, I can go around a leaf like this, and I can go around these leaves, see the dark areas around them? Mm -hmm. Or I can come into here and with the side of the pastel look, I can shade the darks in. Now I can blend that with my finger. Mm -hmm. In a minute we're going to actually use the brush and water as well. So we're going to light watercolour, we're going to look at where the dark areas are here and put the dark areas around the lighter leaves, leaving these lighter leaves showing, like this. You see I'm using the side of the pastel as well to shade in the dark areas, so I'm using the edge to make the marks in between the leaves and I'm using the side to block in these dark and large areas. Right, so I've got enough pastel there. I want you to try that one now, because that one's a bit too blue. It's bluer than I thought it was. Oops. That's a bit darker, that one. So use that one in these darker areas. Inside the darker yeah, yeah. So we've got to put the right colour shapes in in the right places. And my students go mad after a while because they're saying it again, Peter. But I say, put the right colours in the right places, in the right shapes, relevant one to another and your painting will just appear like a jigsaw. It is so simple. I'm doing it. <laughs> it's coming, see, we're getting there. As I say, make the marks around the leaves and then make the marks in between the leaves. But they leave the leaves to light behind because that's what we've done the colours for. Mm, those dark and light. Yeah, I'm much lower now since I got Parkinson. Oh yeah, I'm doing amazingly well. Yeah, I'm doing very, very, very well. Very well, yeah. Uh, the treatment is working really mm -hmm. well. I mean, most of the time you can't tell. No. So look at the photograph and see how it works. But these darks we've made are now going to be fixed by painting them in. 
and blend them around just like watercolour. It's beautifully shades anyway, when Isn't you it? just you yeah. put the water on. And then, know, but remember that anything. it will dry lighter. It it's will right. dry lighter. So but we make the marks in between the petals so now. You'll go to everything? Wherever they are, all the petals are going to be painted, but we're going to draw it in amongst the flowers and the plants, making marks about these yeah. leaves. When I've done that, I'm going to take this brush, I want you to watch this now. See this brush? This is called a rake brush. Oh, yes. And it allows me to pick up the paint from here, <coughs> and take some of that dark, and I can now come in and texture up here. Oh. With a tip crisscrossing look at you. Crisscross, crisscross. You see how to get that effect up there, look? Mm -hmm. Take some of the dark from here and move it on. So I'm actually painting with the pastel, crisscrossing to get these textures of just lightly, these textures of these twigs and leaves above here. Bring it all in between the leaves and paint through. It'll all work. I'll put that brush there for you for and a minute. And still do with the side of the brush. That's it. You, at the moment you just want to be working with the side of the brush, yeah. Blending it all in. So this is the best of both worlds. We're using a matte medium in a slightly transparent and liquid way. Just these few bits here and we're there, aren't we? Yeah. This doesn't need a lot of water, do no, it, no. does it? Just enough to blend them, even clean water occasionally, just don't make them too dark. That's it, crisscrossing all the way over. There you go, pick up some more paint off the, off the darks, and then carry on up there, yeah, that's right. Don't push too hard, otherwise it doesn't crisscross. That's called a rake brush then, and it's very useful for painting animals. Right. And it doesn't feel you uh, struggling to no. paint either. No, no, you're not struggling to try and get everything exact. and It's just painting in a more contemporary, a more abstract way. Now we're going to finish with just different pastels on the top because it's fixed. Mm -hmm. Don't need that brushes anymore, won't need water anymore. We can put that out of the way now. That's it. Your yes. pastel. Now we're going to look at all of these different colours that are reflecting on the leaves. Mm -hmm. We've got a, quite a strong green. So this leaf here just gently bring some pastel, you see, over the top in the, the shape of the veins. You see what I'm doing? I'm making the pastel come in the shape of the veins look like this. So we're making highlights, we're painting with light. It's no longer pastel, we're now actually painting with pure light, if you like. We're painting these colours in as if the sun is shining across here. This is a lovely thing to do. Now what kind of marks are we going to need for that? We're going to have to do little dots, look dragging the pastel in little dots like this to get the effect of light up there. Try and use a, a thicker bit of, see I've got a thick bit of pastel there, use a, a thicker, that's a thicker bit of the pastel there. I didn't want to do this flower, but I'm glad I did. Yeah. I'm totally enjoying I wouldn't it. ask you to do anything you can't do, Emma. And we can blend them as well. So if I, if I use my finger, look, just to blend a little bit, I put a dash of, of leaf on here, a dash of leaf. Watch me now. A little leaf here, blend it with my finger, a little leaf there, blend it with my finger, a little leaf here, blend it with my finger. Yeah, look at that! Isn't that fantastic? fantastic? Because we've got the turquoise. And that turquoise makes the other blue warmer. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, next. I think we'll, we'll come back to the leaves in a minute. What I'd like to do is I want us to get started on these flowers. Mm -hmm. um, with this lovely pink purple. Now, we mustn't lose all the pink underneath. We're going to just start working up into the, see how that pinky colour is there. Mm -hmm. You want to start making, now you've got to put the shapes in the right places again. Mm -hmm. So you have to come back into it and blend them slightly. If you blend it, it kills it, look. Pastel needs to be put on and left fresh. Mm -hmm. So I want you to start working up. And you don't use any fixer? Not for this, we don't need it, no. Down here. But I'm just letting the pink glow through. And that colour pulls together, so I've got little buds. These little bits of pink are right through here as well. It isn't just in the flowers, it's coming through in the background. And it pulls mm -hmm. it all together. Do you see the lovely colours we get? Oh, there you are, that's your one there. You have a go at that. So look at these colours and put them in heavily with that pastel. This is more advanced. Yeah. Come on, right down, even through here where it comes down here, bottom there, that's it. Right down there, yeah. That's the way. You make those big shapes. That's it, Hammer, that's great. 
Now that's what we're going to go back on that. Yeah. Now we've got to go back so to another colour. This is a cooler purple, mm -hmm. and this will make these seem warmer. But we don't want to paint out our lovely pinks and things. We're going to just come in. Mm -hmm. You see how this glows down in the background mm -hmm. here? These shadows it glows down there. I'm going to put some on next here. Don't overdo it. Do you want me to go with this anywhere else? No, that's it. Right now, this one. It's very light blue and it's happening, I'll just show you it's happening into some of these, on the edge of some of these petals. Look how that gives it that effect, you see. So we just need to blend it on top of some of the petals here, not everywhere, but just over some of them. Where you can see the very light blues, like here, here, here. Oh. There you go. It takes more and more looking, doesn't it? Right, okay, so we finished yeah. that colour, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, your darks are already okay, so that's all right. Why have I got right, onto the reds. We've already got some reds in, haven't we, from the ink. Mm -hmm. We've got two reds here. One is a very bright red, one is mm -hmm. a very dark red. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just feel underneath these flowers and around these flowers a bit, mm -hmm. where the reds are a bit strong. That's it, wherever they are. Little bits coming down here, little bits coming across here. But they're, they're three times as big as you think. That's better. That's the size. That's the scale. Some up through here, some here. Wherever they are, that's it. That's great. Really getting a, a splashing picture now. To make these warms really work, I want to use a little bit of ultramarine. This is the ultramarine. It's a beautiful colour look. Uh -huh. And there's some of this happening amongst these, these leaves that I want to just bring out. Because almost there, nearly yeah. finished, isn't it? Yeah. Right, we're going to do some, some lighter colours, that's fine. I just want to look at now the final highlights on here. And, uh, do I need to wipe my hands or not? No, I'm fine. With the lighter. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at a few little bits of cream, see if this helps. It's a bit of very light. Is that going to work? Just a little bit of light here mm. and there. It doesn't need much, just a little bit of sunlight coming through, I think. In the background here as well. Just a few tips at the end of the leaves, maybe here, just to, just to find the sun on the end. Just the very end, the end, end of the leaves, the very end of the leaves. That's this the top, top, top edge of the leaves. Let me do one for you. Just, just to catch the ends of the, of the leaves, just coming over like this. Look. Oh, the end yeah, of it. The ends of the leaves. Try again. That's it. A bit more, a bit bigger. That's it. A bit, a bit more powerful. A bit bold. A bit braver. <laughs> a few little bits of yellow up and around here. Bring it through here, look, just to link it. You see them? Yeah. Now what I've done then is I took this very, very light blue just to finish going down the leaves mm -hmm. here and here and a few bits around the background here to give it some coolness and I think we're about done then. Mm -hmm. Try that, that light blue now. See the difference it makes? It, it's a cool against the warm. Mm -hmm. And anywhere else you might see it is a little bit on the edge of the leaf here, or on little spots up through here, maybe in the cool bits here. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, all these little dots. What do you think, Emma? Yeah, I think it's beautiful. It's lovely, isn't it? It doesn't look like mine. <laughs> very nice, Emma. Are you happy with that? Yes, very nice. A new lesson for you all together, but uh, yeah. much looser and good fun, wasn't it? It was lovely. Mm -hmm.